Welcome everyone to our noon devotion. We hold in prayer today Paul and Gail McKim, Beryl Ruth, Shirley Emmerich, Bob Dutt, Chris Bayshore, Rod Space, John Hopman, Kathy Shirk, Barb Kessler, Denny Bowers, Robert Gregory, Carol Lape, and Larry Shermick Jr. We continue our worship outside on Sunday, 9 a.m., over at the pavilion, weather permitting. If we have bad weather, we'll make a decision by 8 a.m., put a message on Facebook as well as on the answering machine. Don't call before 8. Pastor Bill won't have the message there, and then you'll be frustrated, and so will he. Uh, nonetheless, if it is on, bring your uh, chairs, your blankets, uh, sunscreen, hats, whatever you need, and bring your mask for your protection and for the protection of others. We will be face uh, we'll be FaceTime living the the uh, the service at any rate. So if you can't make it, you can watch from home. Um, we continue to have our noon devotions right here on Facebook Live Monday through Friday. We also have Hold an Evening Prayer Wednesdays at 7:30, also on Facebook Live. If you need something, food, a meal, a phone call, need to talk to somebody, give us a call here at the church. Uh, your church family is here to support you. We're all in this together and we're going to get through it. Let's begin with prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for loving us and for being present here with us in our time together. Help us to grow in our understanding of what your love and grace can do in our lives. Help us to love you and one another more completely. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from Luke, the 10th chapter. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Here ends the reading. A man came home from work late again tired and irritated, to find his five-year-old son waiting for him at the door. Daddy, may I ask you a question? Yeah, sure, what is it, replied the man. Daddy, how much money do you make an hour? Son, that's none of your business. What makes you ask such a thing? The man replied angrily. I just want to know. Please tell me, Daddy, how much do you make an hour? Pleaded the little boy. Well, if you must know, I make $20 an hour. Oh, the little boy replied, head bowed. Looking up, he said, Daddy, may I borrow $10, please? The father was furious. Young man, if the only reason you wanted to know how much money I make is just so you can borrow some to buy a silly toy or some other nonsense, well, then you march yourself straight to your room and go to bed. Think about why you're being so selfish. I work long, hard hours every day and don't have time for such childish games. The little boy quietly went to his room and shut the door. The man sat down and started to get even madder about the little boy's questioning. How dare he ask such questions only to get some money? After an hour or so, the man had calmed down and started to think he may have been a little hard on his son. Maybe there was something he really needed to buy, that, buy with that $10, and you know, after all, he didn't really ask for money very often. So the man went to the door of the little boy's room and opened the door. Are you asleep, son? He asked. No, Daddy, I'm awake, the boy replied. I've been thinking, maybe I was too hard on you earlier, said the man. It's been a long day and I took out my aggravation on you. Here's that $10 you asked for. The little boy sat straight up, beaming. Oh, thank you, Daddy. Then, reaching under his pillow, he pulled out some more crumbled up bills. The man, seeing that the boy already had money, started to get angry again. The little boy slowly counted out his money then looked up at his dad. 
Why did you want more money if you already had some, the father grumbled. Because I didn't have enough, Daddy, but now I do, the little boy replied. Daddy, I have twenty dollars now. Can I buy an hour of your time? Wow. Do you get bogged down with your busyness? Are you like Martha or the father in this story? Too focused on getting the chores done. Too busy making money that you lose connection with those you think you're doing all of that work to benefit. I know that I do sometimes, and I should know better. You see, when I was a very young boy, my father was trying his hand at life insurance sales in addition to his regular day job. He was trying to better provide for his family of five children. Yet, we children didn't see our father very much. We didn't see him too many evenings. And you know, my dad meant well, too well in fact. When folks stopped paying their premiums amid stories of hardship, he began to cover them. And it didn't take too long before he was losing money and he was forced to leave the business. Now for me, this was a godsend. Now my daddy was home more and available to take me fishing or to help with my little league games. He was present again in my life in ways he was not before. And I have many fond memories of these times. And these were the memories that sustained me after his unexpected death when I was 14. Folks, in our quest to provide for our families, do we wrongly correlate the purchase of things with genuine love and presence? I know I have. But I must say that this coronavirus has forced me to stay at home. And I've been spending far more time with my daughter Abigail watching the shows that she enjoys and talking more about her interests and her dreams in life. Jen and I are being very intentional about spending time with Abby because next year at this time, she will be preparing to leave for college and I will miss her dearly. My friends, Jesus teaches Martha to focus on him because he wouldn't be with her much longer. Spend time with your loved ones in your life, even if it is by phone or FaceTime. You never know how long you will have them with you. In all your busyness, remember, you are a human being, not a human doing. So be present because it is often the very best present you can give. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the loved ones in our lives. We pray that you would help us to be more present with them. So often when we are spending time together, we don't show affection or make eye contact or hold hands. Sometimes we think we are spending time together, but instead we are on our phones. We pray that we would set aside all distractions and truly be present with one another. Help us to be intentionally present, showing love, engaging, and being present in Jesus. Amen. Now join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. May the God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine on your path. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Be well, be safe, be present.